Hi, I'm Colton. This is Dylan. We're the host of Hello. the Professional Hippies, and welcome back to another ASMR edition of some good news, baby. What's up, Professional Hippies? Hey, if you don't know us, uh, we like to bridge the gap between <laughs> hippie woo woo, a little bit of professionalism. That might have been unprofessional with me, but so is the cat sitting in my lap. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing good, man. I was. I was getting into it. I'm super you like that intro? ASMR, maybe so maybe you switched up that, a little bit. I was getting some little tingles going on. Yeah, I liked it. Well, you're an a, a, ASMR. I said that correctly, right? ASMRist, I guess you could say. I like the ASMR, but it, it's hard to explain to people that don't have the feeling that causes that ASMR causes for the relaxation. It's so hard to explain it to other people. So you, so when you listen to it, you get a, like a legitimate like feeling. Like that's. Yeah, it's a legit, like, it's really weird. It's like a tingle that literally starts in the back of the neck and runs down the spine. And it causes just, like, relaxation and feel goodness. And so I like to listen to it to help myself relax to fall asleep. And uh, it does cause tiredness sometimes. So, yeah, it was really weird. It used to happen to me a lot with, like, certain scenes in movies. You can ASMR movie scenes. Anybody can Google that and find it, find them. And I used to rewind it and play it forward because the sounds were causing this feeling that I was just like, that feels really good, but I don't know what the hell that is. I mean, since I was like 10. So, and then I finally got, you know, for whatever reason, smart enough while I was in college to be like, Google, what is this weird feeling? I felt like a like a kid looking at boobies for the first time. Like, what is this feeling? <laughs> and sure enough, it's ASMR, and it's a whole world of it. Like, so is that a thing that of like, off of it. most people that listen to ASMR like share that feeling? Or is that something yeah. that you think? I would, I would say so, yeah. It's a pretty shared feeling across the board. Some people have it stronger. Some people, it's like a full body. Some people, it's just the spine. Some people, it's just the head. It seems kinky feeling, as hell. But it's like I, I it does it. seem like a kick. It does, right? Like it's such a soft-spoken, which there is. You can go on Pornhub and look up ASMR porn. Really? There definitely is. Oh, yeah, 100%. <laughs> so was that, what is that, just like naked people doing the same thing? Well, think of like uh, wet pussy. I mean, that sound of like that, for sure. That could cause people to tingle 100%. I've always associated that with a totally different tingle, though. <laughs> oh, me too. It does for me too. But some people use that. Like, <laughs> it could, you could, or they'll just whisper sweet nothings in your ear, make you feel that tingly feeling. Who knows? That's all Jelly Bean does. He just gets up and goes, Dad. Dribble on a dildo a little bit. Lord have mercy. I don't know what rating our show had. You know, our show probably skipped the PG-13 a long time ago, hadn't it? Oh, I always mark not for kids when I'm uploading these. So. Yeah, fair enough. Probably for <laughs> well, we always say meet in the middle, right? Well, this is probably a little to the... I don't know which side it's leaning <laughs> towards. <laughs> it's leaning... Definitely more to the one, the other sides. We're probably sure, not. We're probably more the parents than on. We're just kind of trailing in the other direction here. Just <laughs> probably not the professional route. A little more to the hippie route. Just traveling on past the professionalism and right on into the. Woods. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a it's a weird. You you go on YouTube and there's people that make millions of dollars just doing ASMR videos. There's definitely like big ones up there. Yeah, I come across stuff all the time. Screw it. Like, I thought about I'm doing just it just to flat out, just to get a nice fashion. microphone and post it. I mean, if you're into it, like you'd probably get off on getting other people getting off, huh? Yeah, I like doing like uh, medical ones, some medical ASMRs where they're like taking care of you, maybe a little dental work. Uh what do they call them? Cranial nerve exams is what they call them. With some nice, soft, soothing. ASMR. How you doing? Sorry about that glitch, folks. You didn't notice anything because we spliced it together seamlessly. But technology, am I right? If there's one thing that's a consistent theme about this show, it's just that we are on the forefront of troubleshooting technology. We we are the pros. I mean, we're getting better at it every time. 
Geek so something Squad, comes along. Who? You know, we are Google 45 minutes deep. I mean, faster than Geek Squad could get there, fix it, and turn around and get home for breakfast. <laughs> we got it. Figured I feel like Geek's feel like Geek Squad is only around because there's still elderly people that don't know how to f- like fix a computer on their own. I can't believe they're still around. I mean, that's, I think that's, that's why their only thing is for. I mean, who goes to Best Buy to get their computer fixed nowadays? Nobody except who goes an to Best Buy. Person. Period. What do you, What do you? I mean, I guess if you want like an in person, put your hands on it kind of experience. But I've gone there to to look at laptops and get just to get a feel of what the app laptops look like and talk to them about it. But uh, yeah, like why do you need to go there anymore? But they, I have seen they have pretty good deals on TVs. I go there for TVs. I've bought a couple of TVs yeah. there. They do have some good deals on TVs. They know where their market's at, but they sell everything there. You can go in there for a washer and dryer for for anything, right? And I'm just like, who sells fridges at Best Buy? Turns out all of them. You can just go there, get a smart fridge. It's just, I mean, like once I started learning about retail, I mean, nine times out of 10, you're getting a better deal online for new stuff, right? Because they, they yeah. just don't have to pay the overhead of having a big box store. But for the experience, you know, that's the other thing. Like when I bought an Apple Watch, they had the Nike wristband. Yeah. This thing, right? This wristband at Best Buy mm-hmm. was $59. Mm-hmm. On Amazon, it was nine. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, maybe it doesn't have the Nike swoosh on it, but like as far as having competitive product, you know, I, I looked up the exact same armband. And it was like, hey, you might like this one instead. And I was like, yeah. Well, it's all about it's all about the shipping on what you can and can't buy. So, for example, I was uh, I was I needed some uh, storage containers, right? You try to buy that on Amazon, it's crazy expensive. Crazy just to get a store. Expensive. I literally bought that you, last week. You go to Target or Walmart and it's cheap. And it's just right. because it takes so much more to just ship a storage container I mean, anywhere. Think about like literally the logistics of shipping a storage container. It could not take up more volume for a box. It sure doesn't weigh very much, but it's like... You're not putting anything unless you told Amazon, hey, I want you to put all my goods inside of this this container, right? Start here. Open up all the Skittles I'm buying, put it in there, (laughs) then ship it out. Don't. (laughs) Don't don't fuck with my shipping rates here, okay? Don't. We're going to put it all together, all right? Put the dildos side by side, Yes. all right? Don't. Yes. Right next to the CDs of the ASMR. Uh, have you seen how they have to pack at the warehouse? Keep the lube outside the container, though. So I have the right. giant robot lube machines come up in the work, <laughs> and it's like the, a projector highlights little boxes. Have you seen the Amazon packing facilities, like with the, the workers? A little bit. A little bit here and there, yeah. It looks like the most mindless just droning. I mean, I really feel for Like factory work in general, I guess, is just built for a certain type of person. But they yeah. just... They have a robot drive up with a big shelf of stuff and a projector highlights a square. They just pull it out, scan it, put it in the box. Pull out the lit up square, scan it, put it in the box. I mean, that's just... You're a boxer. You're a boxer. You're a boxer. That's what you do, man. I mean, it's just like... I mean, for however much they're paying them, I don't I don't see why it would be too big of a deal. They just can't go to the bathroom, unfortunately. Well, that's the but. thing, man. I mean, they look at them like they're machines as far as like production rates and stuff. And I just can't imagine... Good boy. Uh, I can't imagine Thank you. Like that just being... Th- yeah. <laughs> Listen, man. It's been a long day. Okay. <laughs> You're telling me I'm in San Francisco. I'm <laughs> flying by the seat of my pants here. How long have you been out there for? Monday night. Business? Play? Yeah, business for Play work. Business? For work out here. Yeah, holiday party, company holiday party. Uh, you know why? Okay. Why? Why are all flights slam packed these days? It's very rare you can find a flight. I don't where, remember last time I was on a flight that was like half full. You know, you just move to a row yeah. that has no one in it. Are you all like? Is how is everyone going to the same spot at this exact same time? How you is know? anyone affording anything? That's that's the right. Thing. I feel like the price of everything has gone up fucking dramatically 
Dramatically. Why are how are all these people still traveling <laughs> this much? You know, right? look at Disney. How is Disney's like attendance just not tanked dramatically? Uh, I mean, that was literally one of the things I was thinking about. It's like we're getting ready to uh to go on kind of a half country loop. So we're starting here, going to Florida, going to South Carolina, Tennessee, and then back. And um I took took my uh, RV into the shop to get fixed, just to make sure it was safe. First off, that was just, I don't know if that was the right decision or not. We'll see. It, it, we're just fixing stuff, you know? Yeah. But um, I just looked at my credit card statements the last couple months. It was just like, I don't know. Am I just spending more? It just feels like the, it feels like the cost of everything is going up. It is. And it, what's crazy, too, is this White House just keeps saying, like, oh, yeah, the cost of inflation is going down or we're controlling costs. Like, stop fucking lying. Right. <laughs> like, what are y'all doing trying to, like, make us all think that, oh, yeah, we're just going to believe what they say? I, I, I'm even starting to talk with a bunch of uh, Democrats now that are like, yeah, we don't know what they're talking about anymore. <laughs> it is rough. Hey, between Kamala Harris or Trump, who would you take? Trump. Okay. Between Biden and Trump, who would you take? Trump. Who's the Democrat you would take over Trump? Uh, who was the the lady from um, Hawaii? Oh, uh, uh, Ortega? Is that her name? No, no, no. no. I want to make sure I get this white. Right. White. Right. Uh, you know, I've looked this up like four or five times. The chick that was, um, she was a Democrat, and now she's an independent? Tulsi Gabbard. Tulsi Gabbard. I would vote for her over Trump, for really? sure. Why is that? Yeah. I just listen to her talk, and very smart. Doesn't look like she's yeah. controlled by anyone. You know, doesn't look like anyone has anything over her head. What she's done for her people out there, they love her out yeah. there. They would vote for her again. So it's just like, I would vote for her, for sure. But, of course, like... Because the Democrats don't have any control over her, they're not going to control. She destroyed Kamala in that debate. Yeah, sure did. Yeah. Sure destroyed, did. and she looked like the front runner, and they pushed her out so fast. Isn't that crazy? Yeah, it is crazy. But I mean, that just shows like it really wasn't about having the best option up there. It was about who can we have the most control over. And you throw a dementia person in there, you can control them as much as you want. It turns no out, no doubt. <laughs> so he's announced that Biden's announced that he's going to run again. Right? Oh, that's going to be fantastic. I mean, I'm, I'm asking for confirmation. I feel like that's yeah. what I heard. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's definitely said it before. And, and Trump has announced that he's running again. Trump's announced that he's running again. I don't think the you Santos think is the nomination. Run. I think he'll get the nomination. Yeah, I don't think they're the only person that would get it besides him. I think it would be DeSantis, but they don't want to have that battle between them them two. So I think DeSantis will probably either become VP or run on in twenty twenty. Uh, That's what I'm wondering. Like, next if, one is. if you're if you're the Republican party, what are you thinking that like, I feel like the momentum would, if it's between Biden and Trump, I feel like Trump would get it uh, running. Maybe. I mean, I think, I think so, but who knows it, it, you know, everyone thought that with Biden too. They might, they might just be like, we want to do everything we can to keep him out and pull him in. Who else would they nominate aside from Trump? Well, well, Trump pissed off a lot of people, too, when he said some negative things about DeSantis. You know, he calls up names and makes up names and stuff. He did that to DeSantis, and that pissed a lot of Republicans off, too. Yeah, I heard a lot when of he major donors for him backed out because of some Exactly. Stuff. Yeah, because DeSantis is doing really good for Florida. A lot of people yeah. like him, and I think a lot of people are moving here because of that, too, as well. So the top, I read an article, I don't know. Might have been ABC or something like that that uh, said Florida is the top place people have moved to in the past year. I believe it. I mean, it's got a lot going for it, especially right now. Yeah, you know, everything going up, you're going to start looking at places like, hey, where can I save some bucks or like what? I just overall don't know. No offense to anybody who lives up north that listens to our show, but like, how do you do it? How do you? Right. That's just impressive. <laughs> I, I, it, it's, 
it's weird to make sense of it, you know, from how much they tax them. Also, like having to deal with the snow that much snow. all year round. Just the snow to wake up and have to brush that off, get to work every time, or just walk through it. God dang. Mm-hmm. But then yeah. again, they say the same thing, I'm pretty sure, of like how can you walk outside and it's 90 degrees every other day? Because I'll have to wait Mostly for around. my car to uh, cool down. I just put the windows down and I'm like, all right, I'm ready to rock. Yeah, I got AC, baby. <laughs> it's, <not laughs> a, it's beautiful. Yeah. I mean, uh, what, what are the inconveniences of, of doing yard work outside when you turn the water hose on? It's a little hot for a couple seconds. Yeah. Put on some sunscreen. Man. Put on some sunscreen. Put in your head, headphones. Listen to some Metallica while you destroy some bugs and some grass. Have you uh, Have you seen the documentary <laughs> on Netflix, Have a Good Trip? Not yet. Not yet. I want to. I know. I've heard it's really good. I want to watch that uh, with Christy. So we've been wait, wait. I've been waiting on a good time to watch that one with her. That was super good. We watched it last night, and I I just thought it was comedians like telling trip stories or whatever, which it is. But they have yeah. a lot of good stuff in between. So highly, highly recommend that. I don't know what made me think of that, but uh, I felt like it was relevant to whatever we were droning on about. No, no. You just realize like more and more. Uh, oh yeah, one of the sayings you said. It, it reminded me of "tune in, drop out." You ever heard that phrase? "Tune in, drop out." Yeah. Oh yeah. Yeah. So that was coined by a guy named Timothy Leary, who is also kind of uh, thought of as the one that is kind of largely responsible for LSD being illegal because he was like, "The shit should be in the water. Like everyone needs to yeah. wake up." <laughs> Turns out the government didn't like that. And they're like, hey, we're on drugs. You know, here we come. Um, so in that documentary, his son is in it. Can you imagine being born? What Like, okay, imagine Pablo Escobar. You're one of his offspring. Or sure. you're one of the offspring of like Timothy Leary. It's like, or Albert Hoffman, you know, the guy that first synthesized yeah. LSD. Like being an offspring of someone that really stood for either something good or bad it mm-hmm. how much do you think that grooves the path for that child you know i don't think there's too many people that are going to come from something like that they're going to be like yeah i want to be a vet you know uh, actually i would say probably pretty good chance like that that means that those parents probably are a little bit more open they're probably teaching their kid to be or being more open to teaching their kid about things instead of having them learn about it on their own down the road through like friends. Like I know with, since I've done this, my kids are going to know f- about it far before they get sent out to the world right. about it, which I would rather them learn about it from me than to be sent out into the world and have someone else, hopefully, you know, who knows who that person is and what experience they have is to tell them about it. What do you think is an appropriate age for someone to try psychedelics? An appropriate age, I would say probably 18 and up for sure, you know, personally, because you're still in brain development. Yeah. That's such a, any before, I mean, what do they say? Even all the way up to 20 something is your brain still developing, but I I mean, at 18, yeah, I would say at 18 though, just because that's, you know, that's your free will at that point, you can do whatever you want. Yeah. Uh, But sooner than that, I think that's, it's probably be more detrimental to more people than it would be helpful. Yeah, like the stuff that's happening in the war with Russia, Ukraine, and and God knows what other countries. The more I'm watching this play out on social media, the more you're seeing there are like really kids, 18, 19, 20, that are fighting this war. Yeah. And I guess that's kind of always been the way, like that's always kind of been the way it's done, is it's been like really able-bodied young men. Yeah. But to see it though being live now you're watching like the videos come through and it's just 18 to 28 year olds out yeah. there fighting for really what because recently florida moved up nicotine to 21 right did they oh i didn't know that pretty sure yeah statewide i, I believe they, they moved up uh like e-cigarettes and then cigarette sales to 21 so you can go die for your country at 18 but to be under that like free will assumption is 20 yeah. at 18 i'm like yeah, you you definitely need a couple bumpers in life to kind of buffer you from just being full-blown reckless. But at 18, yeah. 
you're pretty sentient. You're pretty dialed in. You know what's going on. You know, you just have like you're developed, just the experience hasn't hit you yet. Yeah. Well, you're also in full blown what's out there in the world mode. Yeah. Right. And so you're getting sent out to the world at that point and you're trying to figure out what's going on. You know, then and, and taking something psychedelics would help, I think. Uh I think it would help just be able to control what's coming and going a little bit better yeah. than being able, when you see things coming, just being like, should I, should I accept this? Should I listen to this? Yada, yada, yada. Whereas a psychedelic are like, oh no, that's bullshit. I really shouldn't worry about that. You know, mm. that's yeah. what helped me is just being able to control what's bullshit and what's not, not having high anxiety about stressing over things that I thought were important and it's just, they're really not. Yeah. But from the actual, um, uh biology standpoint see this is why we got to have people on that really really know what the fuck they're talking about i'm over here throwing throwing out middle school terms like biology when it's probably like neuroplasticity <laughs> or god knows what i can't you know, imagine it's funny that too. it what go ahead big what? boy you got you got a what? fresh cookie you got a fresh thought yeah there? i do okay go ahead chocolate chip chocolate chip um I, we've been bringing these professionals on that are coaches and stuff. And uh, what we were talking about earlier, I wonder how people, how you're able to cipher who is bullshitting and who's not right. Mm -hmm. Like going through the, the coaching world. Cause I mean, there's people that probably can re be really good at throwing out coaching terms about psychedelics, especially the people that don't really know what they're talking about at all. I wonder how many people out there are doing that, that have had like one session, right? One or two sessions and now they think they can preach to everybody. And then they, you get a, a serial entrepreneur that all of a sudden is like, I can make a business out of this. and starts preaching. They know what they're doing. Yeah. I wonder how many are like that and how to decipher those types of people. And I mean, funny enough, I, I took down that viral video on TikTok because uh, it was giving me a lot of traction, but I did realize, you know, there's so many comments about people like, hey, dangerous misinformation. And I really wanted to have my first, my first video hit a million and at like 960,000. I, I have had this immense guilt where I'm like, it was a legitimate mess up where I was, you know, making videos about plant medicines you haven't heard of and then psychedelics you haven't heard of. And cross pollination i'm looking at one list i say another list i splice all the stuff together post the video didn't catch it until it's like already going viral and it spun off some interesting conversations but then i did realize like i mean psychedelics hallucinogens um psycho psych psychotropics i mean there's a lot of different terms here are relatively safe you know i mean it, it takes sure you know for, for the most part i think that's kind of a broad generalization you can make is like hey not that dangerous aside from like inducing psychotic breaks or you know bipolar stuff but when you get into stuff like opiates well i mean that's the jumping out the window stuff right that's like hey if you got mental issues you shouldn't be anywhere around psychedelics in in most cases mm -hmm. macro doses um whereas something like opiates a slippery slope right i mean it, it doesn't take mm -hmm. nothing but to discover and that was in one of the videos is that like poppy seeds. Have you, uh, Michael Pollan, how to change your mind? You know, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. So he made another book. Your mind. This is your mind on plants. Have you heard of that one? I've heard about it. I haven't read it, but I've heard about it. So he went into a lot of detail around poppies when he was curious mm -hmm. about that. And you know, some people and the resource he's presenting there is that like, yeah, so you can put poppies on a bagel and you can also grow a uh, poppus somniferum. Um, is the one that is like opiate bearing or opium bearing that is difficult or illegal to, to so you can't um, have any part of the poppy plant in your possession aside from the seeds I believe so like everything else mm. there's it's like the really finicky laws around it or whatever but you sure as shit can get a lot of different varieties of this species and grow mm -hmm. opium tea with it right you just like literally make tea from the the poppy seeds and you have opium tea it's, it's just it, it's the equivalent of you can buy spores for mushrooms for research purposes mm -hmm. but the yeah. moment you go to harvest them you pluck that mushroom out now it becomes illegal 
What's like uh what's the cactus that people Peyote? can buy? Peyote. Mm-hmm. Like it's not illegal until you start boiling it. Right. Like you could just have it, but as soon as you start boiling it, now it's illegal. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's another thing I was sharing with uh we got a couple of, we got Michael staying in the house right now. If he didn't have a coaching call right now, I was gonna have him on, but unfortunate time. <laughs> um, dog. Am dog. And, I was uh, sharing with some people the other day. I uh, really want to. I just haven't made it a priority, but I really want to germinate some peyote seeds and grow them mm-hmm. to button size. You know, where you harvest them, what they're called buttons. Yeah. From from inception, from germination to harvest, how long do you think that takes? From germination to harvest, yeah, probably a couple of weeks. My guess. Keep going. Those couple months. Keep going. Ooh, couple years. Keep going. Really? Yeah. Holy shit. Uh, five years. Keep going. Ten years. Keep going. No way! Fuck yeah. that! Don't do this shit. Just take, yeah. That's too much work for nothing. Just go to the store and buy. It. Twenty years? It's it's fourteen to eighteen years. God dang, just to germinate? No, to like get it to a harvestable the full, size. To a harvestable size? Wow. It grows about a centimeter a year. How is that such a big thing? <laughs> it's crazy. Well, the thing is, so you can accelerate that process a little bit, but peyote's history was not really something of notoriety until we drove Indians onto reservations. And I think sometime in the early 1900s is when Mm. it was first being used as like a healing medicine for the indigenous population. And then it Mm. went through this whole stuff, you know, litigation, whatever. And this, this white dude like really made a push to earn the respect of certain indigenous cultures on the reservations to represent them in courts. So that's how we have these like healing centers that are like religious exemptions in in the legislation. There's not many of them, but peyote is considered like a sacred medicine, uh, like a religious sacrament of sorts for the indigenous population. So you have like two camps of peyote and it only grows in I think like Arizona, New Mexico kind of area. And Mm -hmm. for the ones that go and harvest it, there's like this thing where, you know, you got people that will just go through, not give a fuck, rip it up. But mm-hmm. if you cut it a certain way, it'll just, it'll keep growing. It'll just kind of just, uh, you know, it's like you picked an orange off the tree instead of cutting down the whole fucking tree. Yeah. You know, it's going to take another season. Back. It's going to have to go through some cycles, but it's not going to have to start all the way back over again. So yeah, if you do peyote, especially anybody listening to this, if you have interest in peyote, making sure that it is sourced from like a sustainable source because the ones that are grown in the ground are supposed to be reserved for the indigenous population. And, uh, you know, if you're like San Pedro is a close relative to peyote. Mm-hmm. So, you know, they're very similar, very distinctly different in, in, in the same respect, but I just thought that it would be so cool to, germinate some peyote especially around the time of my child's first birth and at 18 harvest peyote with my kid and trip together <laughs> yeah but what if you get to that point and you're like I don't want to trip with and they're this a kid. fucking nerd, <laughs> nerd. <laughs> I don't want to trip with this guy or girl whatever Screw that. I would pick they them. Up. I don't want to they, trip with them. Yeah. <laughs> there. Unicorn. <laughs> yeah. I mean. Or maybe you do. Maybe they are like that. And you're like, just take this. Just. Well, <laughs> well, the other part is too, you got to head. Yeah, if you're going to grow something for 18 years, you know, you're going to fuck something up along the process. So you're going to have to germinate That's a it. ton of them. Right. You got to germinate a few of them. Right. Like, and then. You got to keep them in separate spots so that if a bug gets to it, if that's a problem where you're at, it doesn't get all of them. It just gets one. You're like, oh, all right. It's separating them out so they're not near each other. 
Yeah, like I don't know if you remember uh, from the Tampa house, Mr. Cactus, that little cactus I was really proud of. I was growing yeah. up in a blue jar. Yeah, so I'm, now yeah. he's now he's doing pretty good. He's like this big. I mean, this guy is growing probably a couple centimeters a year. Um, I'm so stoked. I'm like, Mr. Cactus, he's growing ours. Mr. Cactus. Know? He survived Mr. jelly Cactus. bean ripping him out of a jar four or five times. And I'm like, shit, if that thing can survive jelly bean ripping him out of this jar, his home a couple times, I'm sure... <laughs> I can, you know. Surprised it didn't poke him. It did. He ripped one. I had one from Arizona that I brought back, a cactus to go on the on the fridge. And they had yeah. it like glued into the pot. And it was one of those dudes that has big barbs. You know, you're like, I just don't want to touch it. No part of that. Jelly bean yeah. ate it. Like he bit the things off of it to rip it out of the pot. I don't know what that was about, but. Maybe he was tripping. Maybe he wanted to trip. Hmm. Something I never considered. The cat wants to trip too. Maybe the cat wants to trip too. And he was like, you know, he's been talking about peyote. Maybe this is a peyote plant. I'll go after it here. Did the Egyptians out used to worship them? cats? I feel like that's something that... Uh, I would say so. I would say yeah. so, yeah. They used to think they were like uh, gods or something like that. Like close to God. A, a... Yeah. Funny enough, I just saw... Uh, one of the main Muslim countries during the winter, they let the cats into the mosque because they consider them clean enough too, as well. Like they're an animal that keeps themselves clean. They let the cows in or no, that's Hinduism. No, that's Hinduism. But yeah, I saw that and I was like, I mean, I could see that, but my cat's got some dingleberries sometimes. And I'm like, eh. right? you know, like how clean are we really talking about here? You ever see somebody like, kiss a cat's paw they're like oh you're so sweet kiss a paw i'm like 100 percent. or it's like a being licked by a dog and i love dogs but i'm like i know where that tongue has been <laughs> <laughs> i do not want it on my face you ever say that to your wife <laughs> like, <laughs> no i say a little bit more i know where that tongue's been get it over here <laughs> do you, when you when you reference her do you say fiance or wife Fiance, fiance. We're not, we're not, we're not the. You're wife trying to relish there. in that stage as much as possible. Yeah, we're yeah. we're past girlfriend. We're in the fiance stage, so we enjoy we enjoy that phrasing for a little while. Right. You can't say girlfriend. That's like offensive these days. You know. These days. Now. Yeah. Like, what am I to you? Well, I, I I paid a mortgage for that rock on your hand, so. <laughs> I can call you whatever the. <laughs> <laughs> there are yeah, yeah, significances on that. Mm -hmm. yeah. On a dang rock. That's it just comes out of the ground. What's the difference? Could have been a ruby. We were watching uh, been. the other night. Abby was going through one like, of the could I have bought about the royal family. I don't know if you watched yeah. it on Netflix or follow the royal family or or whatever. I followed it more because Christy's into it. Yeah. Back in the day, you know what I learned about the royal family? And uh, I can't remember that British comedian that was, uh, he was in the movie about the Jeffrey, um, my big fat Greek wedding or something like, get him to the Greek, something like that. Russell uh, Brand, Russell Brand, is that his name? Russell Brand, yeah. 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 Uh, yes, yes. He went in a, on the royal family and I just went down a rabbit hole and, and looked some stuff up. So from my understanding, which could be totally inaccurate, as most things on this show have a potential to be, just as a disclaimer, but this is the way I understand it. <laughs> and they mention it in the documentary at the very end, because there's another episode that's coming out or whatever, that at one point, the royal family recognized like, okay, hey, we got to turn over independence to the countries because they're going to they're gonna make it happen regardless. Like democracy is an idea that's spreading. So the greatest thing called yeah. the Commonwealth I don't really know about what the Commonwealth means, but what I do know is the way they have so much fucking money is that they lease a shit ton of land to the government. So mm -hmm. the government, so they don't own the land. Essentially, they're like, yeah, hey, y'all yeah, yeah, run the country. You got it. Mm -hmm. You got to pay us for all this land. And you don't get to keep it. We get to keep it. So they can choose whatever they want to do with the land or however that works out. So they mm -hmm. essentially, they just were like, it was like the the emperor and the pope thing, you know, where Constantine was like, hey, 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 hey I don't want to be emperor. No, God doesn't like emperors. I'm going to become the 
Pope. Yeah. Right? So it's kind of like this like lateral like shuffle game. It's like in the 21st century, why are people so, so obsessed with the royal family? Like what's that do? So they were just the royal family was just kind of getting ahead of things. Yeah. And they were like, hey, we could go to war. If you really want it, we could do it. We'll make it happen for you. We'll send our people down. Or, or go ahead and take your own independence. We're going to keep the land and you just pay us a nice little just a little, little bit. rent. Little just rent. A little They're like, hey, on what, that land. What do most people spend on their rent? You know, 30, 40% of their income. We're only asking for 10%. Just, just 10%, 10% of your, your country's taxes. Send it to us. What's 10% of your GDP anyway? You know, we're just, gonna just we just fly on down, collect, head on back. Man, how do I get a sliver of the percent of the GDP? You know, that's what I want. I'm not even talking one percent, like a point. Like, what's NASA? Like point zero zero one percent? You know, like well, how what, how do I get how do I get in there? What just got to create something. Just got to create something the country wants, the government wants. You know, figure out a loophole, and the government will be like, all right, here you go. Like Here's a way to space. do that. Or try to create your own sovereign state within the country. And then have them buy me out or... And then have them buy tanks. you out. Exactly. It's like, you could. we could go the tank route. It's not going to look good on you, U.S. government, for trying to take me out with a tank. Or... Oh, you're going to support couple, Ukraine, but you're not going to support Coltonism? Huh? You're not going to support the cult in <laughs> We'll just we'll just we'll just go to Kansas. We'll and we'll start the professional hippies. Uh, uh, duplex. I'm pretty sure if you sat down with the government and said, "Listen, what is South Dakota anyway?" Well, what was that? Uh, what was that documentary um, about that group? Hold on, Wild Wild Country. Um, wild Wild Country. Man, how good we, we should we should do charades. That was good. That was good. That was like that a was good. Right. Yeah, Wild Wild Countries is a good. That's a great documentary, exactly on what we're talking about right now. Absolutely. How they, they went out, set up their own thing. They set up their own city, came up with their own rules, but the rules did not relay back to. If it what wasn't for those meddling kids, if it wasn't for the stinking old people in that one county, that were like, you know what? No, fuck. No, you guys. We don't like what's going over there. So we don't want it happening here. And and so, it's, like, it's crazy to think. I mean, someone, I, I, I guess the way I understood that, they did kind of do their due diligence. They just thought, oh, this county is not going to care or we'll push them well, out. Where they, where, they, where they went wrong is they started doing illegal immigration into the, <laughs> into the, the uh, whatever they were at. In yeah. order to pull votes, they started pulling in illegal immigrants into where they were in order to get votes build that um, and haul it. it build the wall. And they were getting uh, homeless people sent to them in order to build up their votes to try to win against the, the county. That lady was vicious. Holy shit. The like hardcore. second in command, hardcore. That lady was vicious, knew what she was doing. You want to talk about ideals, being able to change and shift people. I don't think there's anything more powerful than a really deep rooted belief. Yeah. I mean, I, I think, I think that's that, just what shapes the world. Someone's like, no, I, I think, don't want to die for this. Well, think about, uh, I mean, what was, that's kind of like what uh, the CIA's used, right? They've gotten people to have a deep rooted belief into things to get them to do what they want with psychedelics in the past. What was that called again? I'm blanking on it, but MK ultra was the mission. MK ultra. Yeah, they got people to believe in these crazy things to do mind altering. Well, I don't think they got them to believe it as much as they were hoping they could get people to believe. They were looking at it as like, is this a truth serum? Is this going to allow us to implant beliefs into people's heads and, and make them like shift their internal? It's just crazy that the first thing the government did was like, we can weaponize that. Just the first thing, not be like, oh, this it really does make help people, people like chill. Like yeah. it could be not. Nah. Hey, you see Jerry over there? We can get him to do whatever the fuck we want right now. Imagine. And also, did you hear about the guy that thought he could <laughs> communicate with dolphins? Because there was another thing yeah. that spun off of that. It was like 
communicating with dolphins and telepathy with goats or something. I don't remember. There was a, a movie that came out. Um, golly, that's going to well, kill me. Well, have you ever been tripping and then you looked at your cat and you had like a moment? Dude, look you're at this like, guy in my lap right now. He, he's he's hearing what you're saying. And he's like, of course. You've had a moment with my cat tripping. When we were on the DOT, it almost said I thought I was in Mario Land. And he comes up and I was like, what's up, buddy? I swear to God he said that. He was like, welcome <laughs> to my world. This is what it looks like. He said, hey, man. <laughs> How you doing? Just welcome. Here's the brochure. Glad you could be here. <laughs> he will oftentimes when I've uh, smoked DMT. He'll come and lay down right on my chest and uh, just. Call That's where he came. He came. At, he laid down exactly on my chest, and it's like, how did he know to do that during that time? Because most times he doesn't want to do that. You know, he comes come. up to you and he's like, "Hey, yeah, you are dying. Just to <laughs> let you know, you are coming to uh, a place you're unfamiliar with. <laughs> you might know me as Jelly Bean, but right now I'm God." <laughs> Hey, hey, look, eyes are everywhere, but just focus on these two right here. <laughs> because back in the day, they used to call me raw. Now you can just call me <laughs> jelly bean. <laughs> know all those cat pictures and hieroglyphics from Egypt? That's your boy. <laughs> he just runs up on you. He's like, walk like an Egyptian. Damn. What's up, dude? <laughs> He's like, yeah, we used to fuck with him back in the day doing this shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like when I used to have that river by my house in Tampa, I'd be like, hey, man, y'all want to go down to the Nile real quick? I could show you some shit. <laughs> I'll show you some shit. Don't break Jeffrey, though. He's not cool. We don't, 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 we don't like Jeff. We don't like Jeff. <laughs> Jeff. Keep him at the pyramid. Don't bring him back here. <laughs> oh, Meanwhile, try it. <laughs> Dude, Triton's so bugged out of his head most of the time. I'm wondering, like, how many ghosts do you see on a regular basis, bro? They'll just be sitting there. Ghosts? Yeah. yeah. You ever notice how he just twitches out sometimes? He just, like, looks around the room? Yeah. Like, oh, That's okay. what Leo does that, too. He'll start looking around the room, and I'm just like, I guess it's grandpa or something, great grandpa. I don't know what you're looking at, but. I mean, one of the things that stuck with me last night, I mean, I was hiring camel dick watching that documentary which i'd highly recommend oh. if you're, if you're going to watch it you know um might as well right might as well and at the end i'm not ruining anything but deepak 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 chopra you know who i'm talking about it sounds familiar yeah i mean he's uh pretty well known for like thoughts around consciousness and um uh, all that good stuff but uh he was just discussing the nature of reality and he's like what is reality when you think about a honeybee seeing an ultraviolet light, he's like, I don't know what that looks like. And they show a pretty cool image of a flower radiating ultraviolet light, or he's like a, a chameleon has two eyes on separate axes. So, you know, they can do like this with their eyeballs. He's like, no way. I know what that looks like. You know, like no a horseshoe way. crab. I think they see an ultraviolet radiation, things like that. So it's or like, bugs. Bugs do too. Just yeah, bugs so, in general. So what is reality? Bugs, it's like your your ability to bats and echolocation. Like the way they perceive reality, or you could mm -hmm. find that maybe is conscious totally different. So maybe Triton is seeing a bunch of ghosts or stuff. I wonder if uh it is kind of weird when you look at the evolution. Yeah, you know, all these animals have their specialties. But human specialty was like the brain. We're going to focus on the brain and how we can just keep developing this piece to get smarter and smarter and smarter as we want to Right? Along. Like that, that just seems to be our thing. Like how can we build extensions of ourselves? How can we make things easier for us? How can we get lazier? We want to get as lazy as lazy as possible. Back to the RV. That's why I paid somebody to fix my RV. I just got to the breaking point exactly. on that thing. And I was like, hey, man, they do. They sent me a grocery list. I said, hey, go go up under there. And uh, I took it in for alignment. <laughs> and I was like, hey, just just tell me what needs to be addressed. You just shake it around a little bit, see what wiggles, and tell me, you know, 
So they sure shit. They sent me a list and uh, I, I took it back up there. I was like, hey, I'm going on a road trip. I know some of this is important. And so I let's let's look at that. And the guy was like, all right, so, you know, what are you taking off? And I was like, what? When you look at this laundry list, what of that if you were driving it and selling it in like maybe a year or two, you know, I'm not trying to keep this thing forever. What would you do? And he goes, well, uh, definitely would do that. Eh, don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. No, I'll take that off. Probably do that. Definitely do that. I was like, okay, what does that bring it down to? Cool. Yeah, no shot in hell. So if we took the probably out of the equation, what does the definitely? And of course, it's shit. I don't know. Like, what are king king bearings, king bushings, uh, king nuts or something like that? I don't know. And I it's was called like, Tyler. I was like, hey, man, I'm pretty handy. And he was like, yeah, if you've never done this, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't. I wouldn't touch that. <laughs> I was like, "All right, all right." Because I looked at the sheet and I'm like, seven hours of labor." And like, they know what they're doing too. <laughs> yeah, that's if that's what you know you're doing. I had I was talking with uh, Chris the other day, so I had uh, some roofers come out to fix a roof that needed to be repaired. Yeah, and then I was like, uh, "Man, I got to have to have someone come out and remodel my whole bathroom too, as well." And then Christy was like, uh, you know, you should really try to like, I know you're smart enough to learn how to do this. You should really learn how to do these on your own. It'll be far cheaper. And I was like, oh, you're right. I should have paid someone to come out to paint the whole house, right? I should have had them come out. I shouldn't have had them do that, right? I did that. I shouldn't have had them replace all the outlets. I shouldn't have paid someone. To, I did all that. You know? Yeah. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have had someone come out and fix the fence. Oh, I did that. It's like right. some things I just don't want to do. Right. I just want to offload that, like pay someone else to do that bullshit. And, and like, some if of that stuff replacing, is like tough. And remodeling the bathroom, sure, I could probably step by step learn how to do that. But it's going to take me months to do all that because that's so many skills packed into an area that it's going to take me a while to learn. I'd rather just pay someone to do it and be done with it in a month. And the most frustrating part when you do something like that, my buddy Josh – is probably the handiest man I know because his father owns a roofing company and he'd like spun off his own uh, general contracting company with that. And I watched him buy a, a double wide as like, uh, hey, I'm going to fix this up, flip it kind of thing. The mm -hmm. man knew what he was doing. And even still, there's this stuff that'll eat you. Like not getting, if you do one of those really cool showers where it's like the pebble floor it, and it, if it's yeah. not sloped totally right you'll catch some water and it gets mildewy you yeah. know it like catches in the corner or like your baseboards have like a gap or something and you know you're not doing stuff right it's just like even if you do it yourself to save the money on some of the stuff it's just going to eat you because you're like ah, what i say 400 bucks but now it's all kind of like kind of like like that, i looked you know? at when i did my floors you remember i was telling you i did that my kitchen floor yeah. Sure, I did that. Did it by myself. I did it. But man, I've got some toe kickers in there <laughs> that like bother the <laughs> shit out of me, right? Yeah. And like it's fine. It gets the it's job fine. done. But yeah. I know it's there. And it's oh yeah. Eats at me that I know it's there. And it's like I learned a ton from doing the process. Don't get me wrong. Right. If I had a more square room, it probably would have come out a lot better. Because I told someone that I did tile with, they were like, You pretty much did the hardest route anyone could do. <laughs> Like on your first try, and I was like, whatever. Right. But um, but if I would have paid someone, they you know they would have been done with it super quick, and it probably wouldn't be a few toe kickers in there. But uh, yeah. well, yeah, nothing grinds your gears like when you're sweeping and you got that nice sweet little ledge that catches all, all the dirt. Ledge. Like now I gotta go this way, and then go back this way. <laughs> yeah. But there's something to be said for learning the skills. I mean, I don't have a problem working on that thing. But when I took one of the windows out and redid all the gunk or uh, the sealant around that, I realized yeah. really quickly, I was like, you know what? We're not replacing the seals on that. I'm just going to take some nice caulking and go around the trim. Call it a day. Yeah. Well, it's like I'm getting my windows replaced in the house. It's going to be a little bit later in the new year. Sure, I could buy them, have them delivered, and figure out how to do that. But I would ask them, how long is this going to take y'all to do it? And they're like, one, maybe two days. Yeah, it's like, oh yeah, y'all do that. I don't want to do, deal with doing any of that. Then. By the way, if you if you bought that uh, this year, 
and but had it worked on next year would that lower your taxes would that be a thing that would affect your taxes? yeah I'm, I'm not gonna be well i don't get charged for it i worked out a sweet deal with them i don't get charged for it till two years after they're installed and right. i can pay the premium i can well, sorry, the interest doesn't start until two years. So I don't have to make a payment on it for two years, but I can start making payments on it mm-hmm. if I want to within that two years. Um, but it would be counted next year as a home improvement to be go to go towards taxes. Yeah, I got to hit up my CPA. She tried getting up with me. Oh, man, just the weight of... Hey, did I tell you about our dentist bill? Can we talk about that? <laughs> No, no, that was just a hilarious transition. Watching your just head go down and just like a weight of the world crumbling on you for a second, and then be like, "Dennis, that's right. Let's talk about that." Just, but I, I did know. see the weight of the world coming down on top of you right there. Well, what you're looking at is a master in deflection emotion. Oh, I know what that. That I feel like anyone that's sold at any fairgrounds is really good at that. No doubt. That's me. Did a lot of that. <laughs> That's you. <laughs> no, I was bringing that up because earlier, one of the things we want to talk about was traveling, right? And uh, yeah. we, go, we go to the dentist and, you know, I got a sweet deal or whatever for like an entry new patient thing. And mm. uh, and I have a fair amount of work that has to get done. And, and so does Abby. And so like total, you're talking like 10 grand, right? Mm-hmm. And I was looking at it. I'm like, I want to get a second opinion. I'm going to get my x-rays from him, send them to my old dentist. Cause some of the work, it, you know, I'm like, I just don't know. I just don't trust the guy. So long story sh- short of it. Have you heard of a thing called, uh, health tourism or, uh, health tourism. Yeah. They have dentist work down in uh, Mexico, yeah. Tijuana. Yeah. Yeah. But you can also do yeah. it out in, um, like Costa Rica or Turkey, Thailand, places like that. And there, there's yeah. a service called Doctors Abroad or uh, Doctors Without Borders, something like that. And they'll vet mm-hmm. clinics for you. They'll vet dentist's office and they'll let you know, like, hey, this is a good place to go to. Mm-hmm. And, and a very honest about like, hey, here, you could save, you know, five grand, but they could also botch something or whatever. And like, they just kind of walk you through, you know, the right way to look at it. And so I'm like, you know, I'm thinking about it. I'm like, fucking, let's say it's 10 grand. So the cost of mm-hmm. a crown here, I think I was quoted two grand because he's, he's saying, mm-hmm. hey, I got a crown. I got a root canal a couple of years ago and he's saying maybe it wasn't done correctly. So I'm looking at it as like, all right, well, it's two grand here, but it's 600 or 650 in Thailand or Turkey. You know, if, if I was to save the five grand by going, but that's also for like flights included. So you can go to fucking Turkey for a week. Get a whole bunch of shit. So that's, well, that's so with that's the price even with flights and everything. Yeah, I mean you're talking, you know, and the same thing with the hair transplant stuff, right? I was, I've seen the hair transplants. Yeah, yeah. So I think I wanna, it's like I six, go, seven. I want to go to Panama City to do the stem cells. That's what same I want to do. Right. Well, stem yeah. cells just aren't a thing being done in America yet, really. Yeah. So like that that's something you got to go to another country. For. Not the. Not the real babies, you know, that they pull it from. <laughs> Look it up. Look it up. <laughs> we can also save, you can save your uh, baby's umbilical cord. That's what I'm saying. They pull the stem cells from the umbilical cords down in Panama. You're not allowed to do that in the U.S. Yeah. That's a huge, like, uh, that's one of those... Um, like very religious people thing that they go after, like, oh, you're getting stem cells from <laughs> you're killing babies to get stem cells. No, you're not. So, no, no, you're not. That's not how that works. But that's how they push it to scare yeah. people into into doing it. Well, that's like into voting against it. Yeah, I mean that's just the conspiracy thing, right? That's like the same thing as some of those yeah. videos where they pluck babies' eyeballs out and make some serum out of their. Yeah, pineal they food. do. They do do stem cells in the U.S., but it's it's pulled from uh, uh, bone marrow, I think, is what they're pulling it from or something like that. Yeah, I don't really know that I have anything that 
maybe my back honestly could use a fair amount of stem cells. I think all the way up and down that bad boy could do stem cells, but that's just me saying like I don't like doing yoga. You know. <laughs> I feel like I get doing yoga for like a week and then all of a sudden the next week I'm like, I don't got time, but it made me feel great. <laughs> I enjoy thing it. That makes you feel great. Should do it. Yeah. I enjoy it for like a little bit. And then I'm like, uh, you know, there, there's just certain practices. I really enjoy Michael and I were talking about that the other day. Dude loves CrossFit. And he's like, Hey, I want to get back into that. And I'm like, yeah, I love CrossFit too. My body just doesn't. You know, I'm really competitive, so then I'm, like, sacrificing form, and I just enjoy doing, like, nice, heavy lifts, picking stuff up, putting it down again, having a trainer there. Love that whole process. Yeah. Don't don't like anything to do with cardio. Not a big cardio guy, you know? I want to get into cardio. I like doing cardio when it's, like, canoeing or, like, kayaking. Yeah, active. or if I'm Or if I'm bicycling. That's how I've learned to do more, to do more cardio stuff. Like, I like taking my kayak out into the bay. Just go out there, just do it, come back. That's a good workout mm -hmm. when you're out there. Or just going for a bike ride. Yeah. Dodging all the pedestrians. That's Or fun. not. You know, sometimes you get in your truck and you get tired of dodging and you say, hey, I'm going to Ford. You ever you have someone crossing on a crosswalk and you're like, oh, finally. I don't know if we've talked enough about the call of the void, the intrusive thoughts. Oh, the intrusive thoughts get me. All, I have them every second of every day. <laughs> like, it is non, non-stop bombardment from my brain of like, how much jail time really is it, you know? Yeah, I mean, if I was just to hammer the gas right now instead of the brake, oh, man, and then, and then you just, you know, you press the brake and you go, tomorrow, tomorrow. Well, you see, like, you got like a, car coming up next to you and you're like well, just, you know just right over to the left like i know i can control my vehicle they probably can't yeah i know just it's take coming. them out i know it's coming they they, i know it's coming take them out keep going just unclick the seatbelt real quick and you're like you know maybe i do need to return to source maybe i just need to <laughs> what is what's the restart button look like let's find <laughs> out or if you're like or if you're like, uh, I've just, or if you're like in a very quiet situation, like a very quiet room with a ton of people, just to blurt out something. Oh, I wanted that so many times. I did that the other day. I don't know if I told you about that experience in the sauna, where uh, Michael and I are just hanging out in the sauna with a bunch of people I don't really know, and uh, they're all just talking about stuff they enjoy you know because we were talking about the ice bath and and they're just like it's like this really fun moment of gratitude and everyone's like oh you know i like this i love that and i love this and someone's like oh there's nothing better than and comedic timing wise sure i should have said it right then but then i was like no this isn't an appropriate place i'm people don't know me like that right and a couple seconds go by and i was like i might not see any of these people ever again or I don't give a fuck what they think anyway. So one more person said, oh, I fucking love. And I was like, heroin. They go, what? <laughs> Y'all don't. What? <laughs> <laughs> so just this, there's this nice awkward settling of tension in the sauna that comes in. I'm like, guys, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. They're like, okay. <laughs> or am I? I'm sweating it out, baby. That's why we're here, aren't we? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I, the uh, sauna convos are hilarious. You'd never know which route those things are going to go. I know. You got someone that maybe is like overzealous about becoming your best friend inside of 10, 15 minutes. And you're like, hey, man, you can shut the fuck up anytime you want. Or anytime you want. Like I have to, I would love to put this AirPod <laughs> back in my ear. Really would like to do that. If you'd like to shut up for a little bit. And, or the, like, be a lull in the conversation. You're like, yeah, yeah. yeah. What? <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What? Don't you say a goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> Put it, putting it back up. <laughs> I played this, I played this uh, do -si do game with that AirPod and a man that was going to talk to me about Jesus for I shit you not all of 20 minutes. I mean, it was cool. It was like great connection. And I felt it started bumming around the, you know, the church talk or like, hey, where are you from? You know, where, and it's like, it's like every time he leaned out when this leaned in. You know, and I'm like, yeah, 
So you know where I'm at here. Like this starts. Surprisingly, I've I have never had someone try to preach Jesus or God to me. But I'm really looking for the dags. I'm really going to go the Satan route. Like hard you have on. Them, never right? had the pleasure of someone sharing your testimony with you. Not yet, which is crazy. I can't That's believe I've wild. gone. I know. I I feel like I would have had it by this point in my life. You know, not I'm not counting the people that when you go to an event, they're like, uh, you know, yelling, get through the microphone. Not those like people. Really I'm talking intimate, about like in an everyday situation yeah. like that, that someone just decides to lay that on you. I don't know. Maybe I just look like a hippie and they're just like, yeah, it's not worth it here. <laughs> What's that say <laughs> about that? me? Because that's happened to me so much. I mean, not, not as much as, as recently. I think it was probably because my sales I think career. Probably because your sales career, you were in front of a lot more like door to door situations yeah. or like face to face situations. You've, you've gone to a lot more retreats where that probably pops up a little bit uh, more. The too. Retreats, they kind of run in the other direction. In fact, it, I feel it runs in the other direction so much. I'll put myself in an awkward position where I'm like, God, right? And they're like, what? <laughs> Please don't say that. <laughs> I'm like, oh, oh, sorry. Oh, I, thought, oh. I thought we were all adults here doing acid, but, you know. Three. I thought we were all seeing them today. Sorry. Didn't know. Only a few of us were. Fair enough. <laughs> <Dilly> noted. <laughs> Which some people, they, I mean, they take acid to get closer. My family, to I go to the my family functions, and they're like, so how often are you seeing God now? It's like, I guess, a lot. They think... <laughs> Just open up your third <laughs> eye with me. Just, just do it. Just open it just up. It. Let's do it. Hey, let's all get in a circle. We're not, we're not going to pray, but we're going to take these mushrooms. <laughs> Dude, I saw it, one of the retreats, and you know, I'm saying this with the most humility possible because I could be wrong and not onto something. But I watched this couple do this and and touch their third eyes together. And by the way, if you want to see what I'm doing, <laughs> check us out on Spotify. You can watch this live on Spotify. But like, <laughs> just like that, right? And and just mm, and I'm like, why it's happening right now? Can we create a flag that does that and go to Burning Man and just see how many people we could get to do that? Like, hey, do you want to touch third eyes? <laughs> just... So th- the answer would be, I mean, ninety five, ninety nine percent of people. It's you know probably and, would right? They would. They let's it, get in there. I guarantee these people have been waiting their whole life for someone to ask hey do you want to t- touch third eyes no no not rub it don't rub it don't just don't touch. rub it don't rub it. don't get it off i still need don't it. get it off i just <laughs> you can go unicorn you can go chicken whatever one you want to <laughs> just don't pop it don't pop my third eye all right well hold on i got a contact in i gotta take it out <laughs> Oh, damn, my third eye's dry. Let me put some water in. <laughs> Wait, let me just touch that up real quick. Let me get that for you. Let me touch it. Oh, it's a little dry there. That so. could be our offering for Burning Man is like a third eye cleaning station. We just go around with little rags and just clean off people's third eye. <laughs> clean your third eye. We just have a station out in the middle of the fly. <laughs> like a like a little lemonade stand. But it's just a third eye cleansing. Come on up. We'll rub it out. <laughs> we should get little uh, little cleaners like you have, you know, when you get a, at a gas stop to, like, clean your front windshield. Little wipers. <laughs> we should get little mini ones. <laughs> and we little get... mini spray bottles. And... and it's a little sticker that we put on right at the end, like you do, like a fresh car. But yeah, it's an eye. Change. Come back tomorrow. <laughs> the last How many miles? <laughs> last service dates. The last day of burning man. <laughs> we can have, we can hand out coupons for free third eye cleanings. Free third eye cleanings. Just come back. We're just trying to get the day. word out, folks. We're just trying to spread the word, brand our business. Just brand the business. Don't rub too hard on the way out. All right. Support. Local. Peel out of here. <laughs> Support. <laughs> we'll get some. We'll get some helpers to come. We'll get a whole bunch of people for our camp. Third eye cleaning camp. Hey, if you guys want to support our business, let us know if um, you want to get a third eye T-shirt. 
and we'll, we'll clean it. We'll clean it for free. <laughs> we'll clean that third eye for free if you want a t-shirt for it. Yeah. Uh, man. Oh, man. Speaking of clean, too, let's talk about the test kits. Always make sure you got clean shit. Oh, yeah. Hey, if you want to make sure your third eye is actually clean, make sure you go to <laughs> testkitplus.com forward slash professional hippies. Um, they've been loving you guys. So thank you for supporting them. Yeah. That supports us. We get a kickback, but we believe in them. Um, I got reached back out to by the company that sent the CBD and Kana products. Um, I still haven't tried the party party capsule things that they sent me, the MDMA alternative. Uh, yeah. I might, I'll, I'll try that this weekend and do a trip report on that. But the Kana sticks are legit. So, I mean, I'll yeah, throw a plug. If you guys want to try Kana... Um, go to party caps, whatever. We'll set up an affiliate link in the show notes, but it was cool. I mean, it was a very subtle experience and that was what I was told. So my expectations were set correctly. Um, wait, I tried that on the episode with Evan. Yeah, you did it with Evan. You said. Gutras, yeah. Yeah. So if you want to see what it looks like when someone does it, you know, go back to that episode, watch that. But it was cool. It was relaxing. It wasn't, it wasn't anything too intense. I'd recommend it. It's just not maybe my cup of tea. Oh, no. Might be losing them. Might be tr- time to land this plane. Land the plane, buddy. All right. Well, I think we might have lost them. So I'm going to go ahead and land the plane for us. If you love this episode, share it with those that you love. Share it with your friends. Share it with your family. Uh, Subscribe. We're going to keep putting out on a weekly basis. We're going to keep growing this. Share us your thoughts. Give a comment, too, of topics you'd like us to cover. And uh, we got some great guests coming up here in the future as well. Oh, he's back. Hey, I heard all of it. You did great, buddy. Yeah. If you guys love uh, us, we love you. Share this with someone you know. We love you. And we'll see you guys. Fart, fart on that subscribe button. Don't do that. Peace. Just rub it. Fair <laughs> Rub it with your... Probably your third eye fucks me. <laughs>